In today's video, we're going to be talking all about troubleshooting piercing instruments, things that can go wrong with piercing instruments and how to fix them. This video is for anyone who is curious about piercing instruments, or maybe you are interested in piercing with piercing instruments, or maybe you have pierced with a piercing instrument and you're maybe in one of these situations right now. I have pierced with piercing instruments in the past and have had one of these situations happen at one point or another. They don't happen often, but I'm going to share with you how I would fix them. So if you guys are new, welcome to the piercing outlet. My name is Christina. We talk all about piercings and jewelry on this channel. So if you guys want to learn more about piercings and jewelry, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. First, let me just say that these situations do not happen often, but they can happen from time to time. And I think it's very important that the person that is piercing stays calm because of course you want the customer to stay calm. If you are freaking out, your customer is going to freak out. And just know that all these situations can be easily fixed. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way, now let's get into the video. The piercing system that I'm going to be talking about today is the Stunex System 75. So the piercing instrument looks like this. You may also see it in white from time to time. This one is silver. Now, in my opinion, this is the easiest one to use and the most common. If you don't know who Stunex is, Stunex is the world's largest piercing manufacturer out there and they are based right here in the US. Now, out of all the systems out there, I personally like the Stunex 75 system better um, just because I found that it was easier to use and I found that there were less misfires that happened and when things did go wrong it was just an easier fix compared to other piercing instruments let me first show you how this works this is a piercing instrument itself all you do is squeeze it with your palm this part and then the cartridge would be in here and it would release the earring I will show you what the cartridge looks like in a moment but the piercing instrument itself does not touch the ear. The earrings come pre-packaged like this. They're already sterilized. This is what they look like before they are opened. And then this is what it looks like once it's open. This has the earring and the backing in there. Then this would clip in there both sides. You would squeeze it and then it would pierce. Once the piercing is done, this gets discarded. This never gets used again. This goes in the trash. The earring, of course, is in the person's ear. This gets wiped down and that is pretty much the process. One of the things that can happen when it comes to piercing with piercing instruments is actually piercing your glove. Again, this doesn't happen often, but it does happen if you wear a glove that's too big. Sometimes it also happens with latex gloves because latex gloves, like they're um, not as snug on your hands. So the best way to avoid this is to wear gloves that fit. So there shouldn't be much excess on the tips of your fingers. They should fit very snug. So I'm a medium, but if I were to try to wear a large glove, there's all this excess at the top. So what happens is if you're holding the ear with this hand and piercing with this hand, this tip can just get in the way and can end up going right through the glove. Just like that. So if my glove were to get pierced, one, I would stay calm. I would just explain to the customer, the earring also went through my glove, so I do have to remove it. You just want to, of course, remove the cartridge and remove this so that way nothing is pulling. Make sure that you don't pull at all because remember they just got pierced. And although you may be freaking out because maybe this happened internally, you may be freaking out because this just happened. You have to remember that they just got pierced and the ear is going to be sensitive. So do not pull. But two things, you would have to remove the backing from the uh, customer. You do risk the earring coming out and then having to repierce them. So it isn't ideal. And then the second option is to use scissors and have to cut the glove off and remove it from around the earring. Honestly, both aren't ideal, so just be sure to wear gloves that fit. Do not wear larger gloves. One more thing I wanna add is not only does the size of your gloves make a difference, but also the position of your hand. So for example, if I hold it really close, I'm using this little foam ear, um, but if I'm holding it really close, you can see in the back right here, my pointer finger, it's likely, the glove is likely to get caught. So, it's best to hold your other hand away from the piercing site so that way your glove is less likely to get caught. 
The second thing that can happen with a piercing instrument is the earring not releasing from this plastic piece that holds the earring. So for example, you pierce and then the earring doesn't come out of this little cassette. So therefore you wouldn't be able to get the earring out or take this off, it would be attached to the customer's ear. Um, it's a very, very easy fix. You just have to squeeze one more time. Let me show you with the other cassette. So, so this is the one that I just used with the piercing glove example. So you can see that this plastic piece is left. Usually there's two pieces, but they just come apart and release the earring. What you have to do if it doesn't release is squeeze and you see how that piece just fell. I'm squeezing it, I'm holding it, and then the earring will release. So that again is just a very quick fix and squeezing it again because the piercing is already in their ear, it's not going to hurt them like you're not re-piercing them or anything like that. It's just a simple squeeze, again hold it. I mean I would always teach people when you do when you first go to pierce you want to do it fast and you want to hold it for about a second and then release because if not that can happen but it's not a big deal at all it doesn't hurt the customer or anything the third thing that can happen is the backing not clipping on to the piercing when it pierces or the backing falling out before you pierce. So some people think that when the backing comes out of the cartridge, cause maybe you flip it upside down or whatever, the backing will come out and some people think like, oh, well, this is damaged. I can't use this and have to get another cassette to, to pierce. But actually you can still pierce without the backing being in there. So I know this is a hoop, so it may be confusing, but the backing sits in this piece and sometimes what happens, it falls out if you were to put it upside down. So if it falls out for one, do not pick it up. <laughs> Two, you can still pierce without it. It will still, like you can still uh, squeeze it together. You can still squeeze it together and it will still pierce. Studex usually has backings in these sterilized packages. You can purchase them separately when you're purchasing your other supplies, but you would just pierce and then go to put these on. Again, very quick fix. The fourth thing that can happen when it comes to piercing instruments is the actual earring misfiring. So that means the earring not going through the ear 100% or not going through the ear at all and totally just like goes to the side. In those situations, I would joke around with the customers and just be like, oh, you have ears of steel. And it would sound much more better when I would say it in person. And the customer would just like laugh with their friends like, oh, wow, it didn't go through. And I would just explain to them I have to re-pierce their ear. And it's as simple as that. I would have to get a whole new cassette and redo it. So what I would always recommend to people when I would train them is you want to pierce fast. You don't want to pierce slow because I feel like when you pierce slow, that's when misfires are more likely to occur. Although with the Sudex 75 system, I feel like misfires happen way less compared to other brands. And those ones with other brands, in my experience, are much more difficult to deal with. These are just very simple. All you have to do is take the cartridge out and put a new one back in. Um, I haven't had any difficult situations, at least in my experience, with this specific system. For more information on the Studex System 75, visit studex.com. So if you guys have any questions about piercing instruments um, that you may want to ask or maybe you want to see more videos about because you may not see them often, then feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you guys want to see more videos, then be sure to subscribe and check out more helpful videos right here. I will see you guys in my next video.